Hey YouTube, it's Rob. I'm back. I haven't posted a ton of videos this month, but I've been working hard, so I had to do the real life thing a little bit sometimes, but never fear, I am back, and today we are going to talk about Blue White Geist, and I want you to take a look at my Blue White Geist. I've been taking a ton of heat. You know, even though if you guys look through my videos, when I do get around to posting about this deck, I mean, just look at the times. There's no, like, time for me to lose a game in between. Like, I'll chain play four or five games in a row and record them all, and I win every single one. So, I mean, you just take a look at my videos for this deck. It works, all right? I wouldn't be putting this up here and putting all this effort into something that I didn't know works. So, you know, take it for what it is, but, you know, just, you know, do your research. At least take a look and, you know... <clears throat> Don't just say, oh, it has to have red. It has to have red. It has to have red. It doesn't have to have red. You do not need red in this in this format. Why? Because the format has shifted to a mid-rangey area. The Jun decks, they don't try and blow you out in four turns. No way. They, they try and drag you to a mid-late game where they ha either have card advantage because their cards are so high value that they just have d natural card advantage, or they actually make some with Lily or uh, Bob or something like that, or you know, <clears throat> just removing you know, remove two for oneing you over and over. They got card advantage. And by the way, they have amazing top decks. Jund has like the best top decks ever. So they they're not trying to beat you super quick. They they need a couple turns, not many, but they need a couple turns to set up their board and get the Jund train rolling. And I say Jund, and I mean black, green, whatever, because you just insert good stuff's color here, and then just put the all-stars from all three colors in your deck, and there you go, there's your Jun deck. So, you know, even blue, you know, the X can even be blue, it, it works pretty great. So, <clears throat> you know, what are we trying to do here, as, as compared to those Jun decks? Well, the reason this works is because you have to attack at multiple angles. You can't just B drop vanilla critters against Jund, you know, and expect to just turn critters sideways and, you know, get victory that way. Um, it, I do not normally play a lot of decks that have critters as your finisher because I think it's too easy to exploit. Those uh, critters are, you know, they're fairly linear and certain cards can take advantage of your critter win condition. So, um, I am using critters for this. There's no planeswalkers or anything in here, so this is, you know, sort of a classic type of a U white control right here. Um, the idea here is that these creatures, every single one of them has a special ability, okay? Like, they're not just your standard everyday, of the, you know, run of the mill critters. So, you know, we'll, t we'll take this one, for example. This can be probably my biggest, um, my toughest sell to a lot of people. They just see Delver. And for some reason in their brains, they think bad. Okay, well, guys, there's 25 cards that's going to flip Delver in this deck, so it's flipping. It's a 3-2 flyer for one mana. All right, I, I don't think I need to sell it too hard because it, it kind of sells itself. It, it's essentially free at one mana. Um, it can come out, it gives you an early turn play and an early turn threat, so, you, you know, you come out of the gates, you know, fighting. And you've got a lot of uh, a lot of good chances to flip this thing. You know, with it, it's gonna flip. You know, don't worry about it. It will flip. Um, let's move on and take a look. Okay, so the next one, Geist. This is you know this is your early threat, but you know can be played later. You, you, if you're playing creature threats, you have to have creature threats at every single stage of the game. So you know this can come out early or late, but you know ideally early. Uh, this would be your second, like your mid range, your mid creature to come out, ne your next level, if you will. <clears throat> it's almost impossible to remove. If they're not running uh, Volcanic Fallout, then you got a damn good chance of you know, protecting this thing. And it's, uh, its other special ability is you know, mostly flying. Most of, it, most of its damage is flying. And it attacks in two pieces, which can be a big deal against certain things, you know, if they've got tokens. Or something, and they're trying to block it. They can't, you know, they can't block both pieces and just chump block. It'll take them two chump blockers in some cases. So, um, you know, it, it makes a difference. And then, it, you know, that opens up you for two for one position moves while you're while you're um, 
uh, attacking. So, you know, you're not going to beat him with mass creatures, but each creature you have is extremely high value, and it's lethal in its own way. So that's a 3-2 flyer, lethal, comes out early. Uh, this is very difficult to remove. Uh, swings for six damage, uh, you know, attacks in two pieces, highly effective, uh, extremely effective. Um, the other creature we're running here is your Snapcaster. This is like your mid to late game. You don't, sometimes you'll play it on turn three, you Snapcaster a Path to Exile, or, uh, you know, turn four, you might want to be Snapcastering a Mana Leak. But most of the time you're going to be waiting and you're going to want to Snapcaster a Cryptic. I, f I find if I can hold off and, you know, stabilize in other ways until I can Snapcaster a Cryptic, that's how I win the game most of most often starting to get multiple cryptics every turn <clears throat> then you swing with geist for the win um, and then your late game threat celestial colonnade takes no desk dex space uh, cast for free although you have to pay when you want to swing but um, you know it's uncounterable uh, gives you mana it, and it breaks stalemates which Jund will a lot of times you'll fight you'll be fighting Jund it'll go back and forth and back and forth and they're not two for one in you they're one for one in you so you get down to the end and then both people run out of cards this comes down now they have they have their own man lands but this is a pretty good one this usually trumps most of what they got coming in so you know there's that um, you know you can block uh, stomping grounds and win um, but in any case it's got protection from sorceries you know, for the most part, you guys can think about that. Um, so, uh, you know, that that's that's the finishing package. You know, there's a few other cards in here that will, you know, give you a hell of an end game. Um, you know, this works pretty much early, well, mid to late, but um, you, you see there's, there's, other than very early, all of your um, finishers are, are uh, able to be played pretty early, so... You know, it gives you some advantage, but others are like Snapcaster, you want to wait. Like, you have the option of going early, even on turn two, just as a flash um, a flash threat. You know, sometimes that's the best thing you want out of them, and you have that option. So you don't feel compelled to Snapcaster an actual spell, but you probably will most times. Um, but yeah, he's this best 2cc creature for blue ever. I, I mean, I can't think of anything that comes anywhere close. Uh, just perfect for blue, extremely powerful, high value, high, high, high value there. <clears throat> but you've also got the cryptic. I uh, don't need to sell that. If you if you guys don't know how powerful cryptic command is, especially in a shell like this, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. This is just a fantastic card on its own. When it starts getting snapcaster, it just becomes overwhelming. You overwhelm your opponent. Um, it's that high value. And then a, a pair of sphinxes. Uh, this is when the game goes really long. You'll come across one of these bad boys, and this is your ace in the hole. It's your joker card once you get to late game. And you'll get to late game with this. I guarantee you guys, we have enough <clears throat> counter spells. We have enough uh, hard removal for critters. Uh, you will get to the late game. You know, you might be winning before you even get there but you'll get there you know you might be tied or winning but you'll get there so that's the deck this is that's what I wanted to say about it I hope you guys found the video somewhat interesting and the, the rest of the videos you'll see is me playing this deck so first I just wanted to go over it and explain it this video will accompany my case if you will you know I've got kinda of like a little mini primer thing written here on the forums because I wanted you guys to see what the deck was and be able to look at it and stuff like that. So this video will just accompany this and I hope everyone likes it and let me know. So later. Hey, thumbs up and subscribe guys, even if you just want to troll me. If you troll me on the forums, don't think I'm just going to automatically tro delete your posts on my YouTube videos. I leave trolls. You can troll me on the YouTube videos. I do not care because the trolls actually help me. You know, it gets the video more popular. So I don't care about trolls. Put them up. I don't care. Um, I'll respond to them and make you look stupid, but, you know, most of the time, but I won't delete them. All right, later, guys. Thumbs up.